This is 7 News. Tonight, new details on the long, violent history of Jill Maher's killer. The mystery shower deaths of two young brothers in their Ellenbrook home. Angry protesters blockade state parliament. And exclusive Docker star Nat Fife, his life away from footy. Quite tiresome, especially on a hot day. From the studios of Seven Perth, Susanna Carr and Rick Arden. Good evening. It's been revealed the man who raped and murdered former Perth woman Jill Ma was on parole for a series of sex crimes on the night he attacked her. Today, Jill's grieving family told of their heartbreak as her killer, Adrian Bailey, asked the judge to jail him for life. Jill Ma's husband described Bailey as a grotesque human being. Amelia Brun reports. Jill Ma was just half a kilometre from home when her killer, Adrian Bailey, struck last September. The WA coroner says the deaths of two young brothers in Ellenbrook may always be a mystery. The boys were found dead in a shower. Their mother has said she passed out and that tragic day is a total blank. We warn some of the details in this reporter confronting. Tracy Moran reports. An elderly woman was killed on a busy Perth highway this afternoon. She was hit while walking across Stirling Highway in North Fremantle. The victim, who was 83, was taken to Fremantle Hospital but died shortly after arrival. Major crash investigators closed part of the highway, which meant traffic towards Fremantle banked up for more than six kilometres. Drugs have allegedly been found at the Sydney home of reality TV star and musician Joel Madden. It's understood police were called to his apartment late Sunday evening after being alerted by cleaners. Officers say they seized a small amount of plant matter believed to be cannabis. Seven News understands the star was present during the search. At this stage, no charges have been laid. The driveways to Parliament House in Perth were blockaded by angry union protesters this morning, forcing politicians to abandon cars and walk to work. MPs were greeted with boos and jeers. Some were escorted in by police and security guards. Liberal MP Rob Johnson faced a wall of workers when he got to work this morning. And up next, our special report on the cafe strip fast becoming Perth's new social hotspot. Plus, fight for justice. Parents of a Perth teenager who died from methanol poisoning demand answers from Indonesian police. And a bikey arrested after a street shooting. And Basil's here with sport. It's a must win for the Socceroos tonight, Baz. They really have to, Sue, so yes. That's to stay on the easy path to Brazil. The good news, we've scored. Bresciano gets the Socceroos started. And Bresciano scores! Mark Bresciano! And come back on hold. Another delay for Matthew Pavlich. The Socceroos lead 2-0 early in the second half of their World Cup qualifier against Jordan in Melbourne. The Aussies need to win this one and their last game against Iraq to guarantee a safe spot through to Brazil. The Aussies still 2-0 up in the soccer. That's great news. Here are Rick and Sue. Good night. Thanks, Baz. Rain is on the way. Angela is next with the weather. And bargains at the Bowser with Fuel Watch. Coming up, dangerous car repairs, insurance companies cutting corners, leaving your car a death trap. A Bali warning, the Indonesian airlines that fail the safety tests, which planes Perth passengers should avoid. Plus, stop wasting food, how to turn fridge leftovers into feasts and save $20 a week. After Oslotto. Now, Fuel Watch, Perth's petrol prices. Brought to you by Fuel Watch and 7 News. Hello, clear skies overnight caused the mercury to plunge. Jarrawood was the coldest spot, recording a minimum close to minus one, the coldest June night Jarrawood's seen in two years. It was chilly in Perth too, and tomorrow there's the risk of storms. Right now it's 14, winds are from the southeast, and the barometer is falling. Last night it dipped to seven degrees, and this afternoon it peaked at just 18.2. It was coldest in the hills today, Kalamunda's top only 15 after it fell to five degrees overnight. Fremantle 
Tom Bullsbrook shared a max of 19, Mandra's top just 18. Up north, it was a hot day. Kununurra peaked at 35, as did Wyndham, both taking out the state's highest max. Exmouth got to 25, Geraldton was 24, and it was 18 in Bunbury. Tomorrow, it'll be cold again through the southern half of the state. Kalgoorlie will see a top of just 14 and 16 degrees in Esperance, partly cloudy, and 19 for Bunbury. And storms are on the cards from Perth all the way up to Exmouth, mostly sunny though, and 29 degrees for Broome. On the satellite pick, there's a patch of wet, stormy weather moving in over the Pilbara, but most of the state is clear thanks to a high moving into the bite. But a trough down the west coast over the next few days will bring some mixed weather and possibly even some storms. Most capitals tomorrow are in for wet weather. Adelaide's expecting showers and a top of just 15, rainy and 14 in Melbourne, showers and 13 for Hobart, wet and 19 degrees for Sydney and the chance of some storms for Brisbane. On the water, winds will turn northeasterly in the morning, reaching 15 to 20 knots, seas reaching a metre and a half, the swell up to two. So we could see a return of wet weather from tomorrow, possibly even a storm, 20 at the top after dipping to eight tonight. Showers are forecast again Thursday and Friday, then clearing up on Saturday, just in time for the weekend. It's time now for Oslotto. Good luck. And that's the news for the moment here on 7. We'll be back later with news updates. Now here's Monica and Today Tonight. Hello again, thanks for joining us now. First, every year, hundreds of thousands of West Australians take to the air for holidays or business. But how safe is the airline you're flying on? Tonight, we reveal the worst airlines in the world for safety. And as Graham Butler reports, for Perth travellers to Indonesia, it's not good news.